Welcome to Know Your Mobile. I'm Basil. This is an Apple iPhone 5 the Sony Xperia Z and we're here to compare these two gorgeous phones. The Sony Xperia Z is the latest flagship from Sony, weather resistant, so water resistant up to 1.5 meters and dust resistant as well. Um, it's also got a 5 inch full HD display. It has a really great, gorgeous, high PPI. The design's also a new move from Sony. It's really classical, glass front and back. It's a really stunning phone altogether. But the Apple iPhone 5 won't be outdone on the design front. It's an absolute design mastery. The beveled edges, everything, its lightness just come together to make it look like a watch. It's just that got that element of design finesse about it. At just 7.6 millimeters thin, it's also thinner than the Sony Xperia Z 7.9 millimeter chassis. Um, it's gorgeous light. Both phones are gorgeous. And we're here to tell you exactly what's different about them kicking off with the design you can pretty much see the major major differences the sony xperia z has got a five inch screen which makes it a much much heftier phone very little bezeling admittedly but it just is a lot bigger in the hand i'm six foot four i definitely notice the additional size to it the iphone 5 much much slimmer the longer um, aspect ratio also means it's very narrow in the hand um it's a bit irksome for the power button if you're holding it left-handed for example it's not the easiest to press the power button on the sony xperia z is gorgeous actually and definitely worth noting we can actually just zoom in on that for a second focus in even you can see it's got a really nice uh, texture to it it's got a spiral spun metal finish and indeed it does pay off dividends it looks beautiful feels really good and this positioning is very easy to press whichever hand you're holding it in but enough about the power button and as far as the remainders of the phone go you've got glass front on both devices track and trail glass which is six times stronger than regular glass on the sony xperia z on the reverse of both devices, um, you've got the cameras. Uh, Xperia Z packs uh, Dragon Trail glass on the back as well, whereas the iPhone 5 is indeed a metal backing, and it feels very nice, less um, delicate than the iPhone 4. If you drop it, only one side can break. Whereas the Sony Xperia Z, we haven't had heard of anyone dropping it, but we'd imagine that it's quite shatterable, relatively speaking. Although, like we said, it's meant to be stronger than regular glass. As far as buttons go, no buttons on the front of the Xperia Z, just the standard iPhone um, home button on the Sony, um, Apple iPhone 5. Left-hand side of the iPhone 5, power buttons, uh, sorry, volume buttons, as well as a lock toggle. Um, micro nano sim eject tray on the right hand side up top is a power button on the reverse no buttons or anything down below lightning connector 3.5 mil headphone jack um all in all iphone 5 it's older than the xperia z but it still feels like a very very premium premium phone the sony xperia z's ports are all underneath flaps this is um owing to the weatherproofing micro sd card slot on the left hand side right hand side you've got a micro sim uh, tray and a micro usb port that power button we talked about volume rocker down below no buttons or ports whatsoever while up top is the uh, 3.5 mil headphone jack again underneath a flap too many flaps for our taste um but that said, weatherproofing is going to be completely priceless. Um, naturally, if you are, have the flaps open, that negates the weatherproofing. One other element of design woe that we have is the loudspeaker on the Xperia Z. While it's perfectly loud enough, um, unfortunately, the positioning of it means that it's actually going to be very, very easy to muffle. So if we, for example, play back some music and it's in our hands. And indeed, if we're playing a game... You can probably hear the effect that's having on the audio. That said, if you are listening with a loudspeaker, a lot of the time it will be down, in which case the audio quality is perfectly good. Naturally, you don't have that issue with the Apple 5 unless you are muffling it like so. Um, in terms of the displays, both are gorgeous, undeniably. Both stunning. We prefer the Sony Xperia Z based on the size. It's Bravi Engine 2 means images just look so, so, so rich and vibrant. Viewing angles on the iPhone are better. Brightness on the iPhone is better for whites. However, movies are just that much more immersive on the app, um, Sony Xperia Z and responsiveness too. In fact, we haven't seen anything like it so far. We sure think that'll change come MWC, but right now it's definitely, definitely the winner. It's also got a higher PPI, so that's 441 PPI on the Sony Xperia Z. Um, and on the iPhone 5, it's I think it's in the 300 range. Um, 
326 or thereabouts. On the um, iPhone 5, you also got an 8 megapixel camera in contrast to the 13 megapixel camera on the Sony Xperia Z. The iPhone 5's one might be lower resolution, however, the pictures do look a little bit better because they don't look quite as processed. Um, the Sony Xperia Z, however, packs a much, much better user interface for the camera. If we just jump into that, we can really show you exactly what we mean. Um, the automatic mode, if we hop into it, um, is going to be really, really smart dictating <clears throat> what scene picture to take for you. So, for example, if we go into full superior auto, it's called, we can see the phone knows immediately that we are taking a macro shot, which pop out to <clears throat> our screen. Uh, this, it, it actually gives you an illustration of the type of shot you're taking on screen. So, again, actually, it's not quite doing it. There you go. You can see it's popped into macro. Pull out. We can bring some text into display and we can see it's actually suggests we're reading text you might not be able to see the icon but it's really nice that it lets you know exactly what decisions it's making as it's making them um, there are also a whole host of picture effects, a burst mode of 10 frames per second, uh, 9 megapixels. Um, so while processing is really heavy, noise isn't handled incredibly well on the Sony Xperia Z. Um, we do have to say the user experience ultimately is going to appease any camera enthusiasts out there. In contrast, there's just a piddly little grid um, and HDR on the Apple iPhone 5. Not bad considering it's got all that intelligence going on in the background. Um, and it does. It takes fantastic pictures. So if you just want to point and shoot, this is the one for you. But the Xperia Z gives us those additional options, which are gorgeous to have. As far as user interfaces go, oh, we've swapped sides. Um, Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, um, Apple iOS 6.1, uh, both great operating systems really rich been around for a while so they're really really well established you have loads and loads of app support apple's um iphone ios apps tend to be a little bit more polished in general however most of them are making a pretty um faithful port over to android um sony also supplement the apple or the android applications with their own such as the social life application uh, which streams through your social network feeds quite beautifully um, and they're really really nice and easy to access and interact with in addition uh, sony also supplement the android experience with widgets and a whole bunch of themes that add to the user experience no end. Um, you can edit home screens as well. If we tweak a theme though, you can really see just how rich the themes are. Um, if we jump through to, for example, an amber theme or a ruby theme, let's go with ruby. Um, we can see not only has it tweaked the actual highlights within icons, etc., it's also swapped out our lock screen wallpaper to really complement the overall theme itself and um, you don't have that level of customization in fact you don't have widgets or anything both have pull down notification bars however it's much much richer on android because the actual pull down notification bars can be um, expanded swiped out of the way that owing to this being jelly bean both have their own personal assistance of sorts on android you've got google now which is a fantastically intelligent way of um, accessing is some information that's relevant to you like right now it's telling me how long it's going to take me um to get to the last place i searched for on google maps siri is um well, siri is accessible through a long press and that's a voice assistant um it's very rich in its own right however it isn't quite as intuitive as google now um and it's certainly not quite as predictive so um, they're the cr that's the crux of the operating systems. Um, Android naturally has these apps drawers, and Android indeed is much more customizable. App drawer, home screen, everything like that. Downloadable apps, you can swap out your keyboard. The Sony keyboard is fantastic, but for example, a lot of people prefer SwiftKey. It's all there for you. iOS, much, much more constrictive. It's easier to use as well, so maybe the option for anyone who wants a simpler phone experience altogether. So that's uh, um, user interfaces, and we're now going to talk about processors. The Apple iPhone 5 has a dual core processor with one gigabyte of RAM. iOS is much, much more efficient. So the quad core processor with two gigabytes of RAM in the Sony Xperia Z shouldn't make you think that the iOS, um, sorry, the iPhone 5 is weak. Indeed, um, iOS, as we said, is more efficient. So you probably see lag and slowdown less on the iPhone uh, 5 than you will on the Sony Xperia Z. That isn't to say we saw lots of it, but it is there. Um, and that's mainly in play uh, thanks to the gorgeous giant 1080p display, um, which, as we said, has a much, much higher impact on the processor than indeed the iPhone 5's smaller screen. 
Um, performance, so on the Sony Xperia Z in terms of 3D gaming and other um, image and in, uh, memory intensive applications like watching HD movies was perfectly adequate. We found very little to no stutter or slowdown whatsoever and for that additional screen real estate we'd actually um, call it pretty even kill on the um, speed and processor power front um, with both devices performing admirably given what they have to work with. Now in terms of battery life, and that is an area the Sony Xperia Z actually loses out on hands down unfortunately. The Apple iPhone 5 battery life isn't the best out there and it's got a really really small capacity battery. Um, however the 2330 milliamp battery in the Sony Xperia Z just isn't enough to power that huge HD display and quad core processor along for a full day. It does come with a dock um, option available and indeed that does help things along with the gold connectors just meaning you can slot it on the dock without um, taking opening up any flaps but the dock won't be for everyone and indeed many people will want a phone that will just last all day without any real issue now it is worth noting that this isn't final software on our Sony Xperia Z so when it hits retail it might well improve um, however that is definitely has been our finding Last last element we're going to talk about is core quality and the iPhone 5 wins on this front. Most weatherproof phones do sacrifice on core quality in some way in order to ensure um, that they are completely uh, water resistant when submerged and the um, iPhone 5 doesn't have that to contend with. Um, crystal clear voice quality when compared with the slightly less clear Sony Xperia Z. So that has been our comparison video of our Sony Xperia Z and the Apple iPhone 5. We haven't covered everything, so if you have any questions, fire them in the comment section below and we will endeavor to help you with them. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.